Welcome to the State of the Markets, a real estate podcast with a twist of irreverence every now and then, where we explore the ever-evolving world of buying and selling real estate and promise to bring you the latest and greatest in real estate news from the East Coast to the West. We do love to have fun while we talk shop. We are a group of kick-ass realtors selling properties from the bustling shores of the New Jersey coastline to the sunny beaches of Southern California. So join us at the table for good humor and conversation, where we will dive into market trends on both a micro and macro level, share thoughts and stories about our own real estate transactions, all while bringing a fresh perspective to the industry. Whether you're an experienced home buyer or seller, or just starting out, you'll find our insights and experiences both fun and informative. Tune in for some high-level, knowledgeable, and just plain entertaining conversations. All right, let's dive headfirst into this episode. All righty. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm Debbie Lucas, your moderator for today, and I am joined by my real estate besties from across the country, starting with Lisa Lamborghini coming to us from the San Diego area. Cheryl Castle, located in Central California, and our other two ladies coming from across the country, Lisa DeStudo from the Jersey Shore and Christine Boyson from South Jersey. Okay, so let's jump right in. So we often talk about how important it is to know all the players. What does that mean? Lisa from South, Lisa from the Jersey Shore. I'm going to send this over to you. Why don't you get us started? Why is it important to know all the players, let's say, in regards to contingencies? Oh, absolutely. So for those who are new to our podcast, uh, contingencies usually um, can fall on either side, whether it's the seller or the buyer, but most commonly it's the buyers who ask for contingencies for the most part um, to cover closing costs and other expenses associated with buying a home. So just for example, um, this one threw me for a loop about three years ago when the market was normal and you didn't have bidding wars and things like that and everybody throwing home inspections out the window. Um, I had a buyer, I had the listing, so I had the buyer as uh, offer in front of me. I go over it with my client and when he saw contingency, they want me to pay their closing costs. I go, uh, yeah. Now keep in mind, I'm going to pause for a minute and tell you that Normally, you never really give full asking, you, unless it's absolutely worth it and it's priced right. But for the most part, everyone always tries to feel like they got a deal. They cut up a certain percentage off the, the sale price. So the couple comes in a little over asking to cover the closing costs. So he still, he got like 3000 less than what he was asking for, to be honest with you. I thought it was a really good deal. My seller says no. I'm like, inside... I'm saying, oh my God. I'm like, oh, well, and then I asked him a couple of questions. I go, why are you saying no? He goes, I, er- I learned to save my money. And so I'm not helping someone else to cover their closing costs. They've got to learn. He was trying to teach them a lesson. I was like, I was blown oh. away. That was the first time that ever happened to me. I don't know about you ladies, if, if you've had a similar situation like that. Is anybody out there? <laughs> well, no. just me the Girl. lucky one <laughs> out here in california we um yeah that's written in the t- contracts all the time but our biggest contingencies here is um probably the inspections which over the last two years was waived a lot for us but um they're coming back into it now everybody's getting their inspections and we it's a big deal for buyers. It's a real important contingency to have, to be able to, we've switched to, from calling them inspections to um, basically it's the investigation period. So it covers looking at the house itself and it covers things like drive by the house on the weekends, make sure the neighborhood's what you want, make sure you research the schools, make sure there's nothing else in the area that you investigate fully before you purchase the house. And you have a certain period of time. I mean, we have like usually 17 days to get all that done. And then that protects you from losing your earnest money deposit so that you don't lose it on your contract. And during the pandemic, the two years we had that was crazy in California, people were waving contingencies left and right. So I'm really happy to see them back. I'm really happy to be, because I think it's in the market on both sides. Um, 
basically better for both. It is actually better for the seller, I believe personally, to have all those contingencies in place. Yeah, I agree. Um, so what do you think, Lisa? Or how about Southern so, California? Is it like that? Oh yeah, absolutely. The thing that I noticed is that um, with my clients through the pandemic and saying, oh no, I want to waive it. I don't care what I'm going to do. I want that home. But the thing is, is that the home inspection gives you an insight of what is going on with that home. You can walk through the home and think everything is fine. But what that inspector does is go through and make sure that, you know, what about mold, you know, and stuff like that. So I had a, a couple of uh, buyers that go, oh, no, I, I don't, I want to waive it. Well, after the closing, they found out that they had mold behind in one of the bathrooms behind the wall. Well, it, they didn't know until they did a, a yeah. actual mo mold um, inspection. So, you know, and then it's too late. Either. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, uh, it's on then the buyer too bad, you know, so yeah. it, no matter, even if your buyer says, I, I want to waive it, we as agents need to educate them of what the protocols are if they waive it. So what do you think, Christine? Yeah, so contingencies or concessions, all these things we're talking about come in many different ways from inspections to buyer getting credits. Um, also contingencies can be someone who's the buyer uh, also needs to sell a home on the other end. So that's another type of contingency. And I had this happen to me uh, over the summer, I had a listing and, um, my sellers had bought a large 65 acre farm and they paid cash for it by taking HELOCs out. So, you know, they did not want to have a long closing on the house. They wanted to, you know, maximize the market and get sold quickly. So they weren't interested in a contingency of someone having to sell a home. And we went under contract. We had open house, went under contract within three, four days of going on the market. It was a great house. And those people on the third day of attorney review, the fourth day they pulled out. So we were back on the market and now everything literally, as you know, things were changing from last year, from June to August to September, things were changing rapidly. Okay. And so now we're on the market uh, again and we get somebody who comes along, loves the house, but they don't live nearby. They are out of state and um, they have to sell a home. So I really was a little skeptical about taking on the contingency for them because, but they were like, well, we're not really in that big of a rush. It's okay. They were military. Uh, he was getting out of the military and they felt a little, you know, uh, compelled to want to help him out and understanding they needed to sell the home. So the only way we accepted it was because we in fact had a backup offer of if in fact they could not sell the home in time and get under contract, their father was going to step in and pay cash for this house. So my clients felt secure in taking the deal. So that kind of contingency can be uh, interesting because typically if it's in the States and it's somebody selling a home, I want to, when we go under contract, I want to get information about, okay, the buyer, once you get under contract, I want to see your contract on your house. On your end, I want to know who all the players are in that deal because if things start going wrong, I need to have contacts. I need to be able to you know, mm -hmm. be in front of all those issues. This one was in Hawaii. There was a time change. And because we had the cash backup, I um, I would say let my guard down a little bit, but I, I didn't press on it because I knew we had that backup of the cash. And um, so we went under contract and it did take 60 days. Uh, but right before we were about to close, there was a delay. So um, Christine, I can explain sounds, all about that. Oh my goodness. That sounds like a fantastic story. And you know what? We are going to share all of it with you because we have heard a little bit about that story and there's a lot of lessons in there. So we are going to say thank you for joining us today. And we're going to pick this story up in our next episode. We hope you join us and have a great day. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The State of the Markets. We hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as we did. Let's stay connected. If you have any burning questions or just want to keep the conversation going, reach out through any of our socials. All of our handles can be found in the podcast description. Or if you'd like to speak to us directly, you can send us an email at thestateofthemarkets at gmail.com or visit us on our website at thestateofthemarkets.com. 
If you found our show to be the perfect mix, then don't be shy. Be sure to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. We appreciate you letting us be a part of your day, and we'll catch you next time.